back, I've just been obsessively watching Anton Corbin videos this whole quarantine. <laughs> Being like, what? What is there to see? What is there to, you know, there's his particular artistic vision has just been, I've just been like listening to Joy Division and watching his videos the whole time. Like the spring was so dark. Yeah. Every, every system was failing and people were dying and there were ambulance sirens all day. I, I saw a DJ on the 4th of July who was, she was like, okay, everyone like spread out a bit, but you can dance. You're here, you're alive. You're here and you're alive. You know, just like, okay, good. We're here, we're alive. Even just on the fact that I'm a musician and my great grandfather was a musician is not a coincidence. And so the events of the 19th century are extremely present in my daily life. Like I am who I am because of decisions that were made in the 1870s in Utah. How's it going? It's good. How are you? I'm doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> sort of all right. Okay, let me introduce myself first. My name is JD. I'm hosting a television program called Two Meter Sessions, Two Meter Sessions. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this ever since 1993. Yeah, and, and well, we're actually stuck in the same situation as you are. <laughs> because you're on a digital world tour now. And we, we are working with Dutch bands only at the moment. So we cannot invite any, for, well, any foreigners. But happily, I got your album and I love the album. And Thank you. I want to tell you why, because I feel and I also hear and I tend to recognize it in the video clips as well, a great sense of urgency and energy in it. And, and that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's it. It's, yeah. There's definitely a sense of urgency there. <laughs> and therefore it becomes very personal as well. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a little bit what it's rooted in, where it's like, my God, how did we get here? How did I get here? Yeah. What do we do? <laughs> Which is the, you know, the last, I mean, particularly the last four or five years have been increasingly that feeling, I think for us all, where it's like, what is going on? This feels bad. How did this happen? What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> yeah. Are you able to find some sort of an answer or the beginning of an answer? Not as an individual. I don't think there's like an individual answer that's particularly useful in this moment. There are, there are things, but to me, there's, there's a procedural answer. There's a communicating with people. There's a, there's a getting together with people though. That that's the particular cruelty of this moment is that the getting together with people is so fraught, but there's something about, like working it out with people both gets you to a better answer, but also that process is what actually makes it work. That was what makes it, if the answer is going to work at all, that's what makes it work is that you go through something with these people around you and you move forward together. When I got the album, I started looking for videos immediately. And it struck me that there are two contradictionary videos made by you. One, you sitting in the boat, rowing a boat, and some sort of showing happiness very much. Yeah. On the other hand, I see the subtitles to the video where you mention the frustrating number of one and a half million people who are in prison. So there's, it's so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's so much, and uh, I wouldn't call it Depressive, I didn't get negative about it myself. On the contrary, I would say. But I, I do not know how we can end this stream of, 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 of imprisonment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very long road forward to changing it. And in America, all of the police and all of, almost all of the prison work is all done at this, the local level, it's all done in the cities and in the states. And so it's not like you pass one law and it's fixed or it begins to be fixed. You have to pass, you know, the, Ferguson is the thousandth biggest city in America. So there's at least a thousand police departments that you have to like change, which is even changing one is 
is work enough for a lifetime for, you know, it's a generational amount of work. Um, and just to do it a thousand times is a very, very long. I feel people are paying attention in a way they haven't even, they weren't even paying attention five years ago. So it's there, but it, yeah, it's going to be a very long path to, to change. So you open up your mouth. Uh, you want to show it, not just by song, but also by video. Do you find enough comparable colleagues in the business who do the same thing? Do you feel that musicians should speak themselves out more heavily about this? Yeah, I do. But I, I do see it. And I do see, I mean, I, I'm of two minds where I, I truly believe in art for its own sake is beautiful. And like Emily Dickinson in her bedroom writing poems is glorious. And I have no issue with that. But it, for people in the public, in my experience from talking to people, I've, like there was a, there's a, a young black woman writer, rock and roll fan. I read a piece that she wrote in Texas Monthly talking about being a black fan of rock and roll music and feeling awfully alone because it's so white dominated. And then suddenly to have the bands she likes, like the Foo Fighters saying that Black Lives Matter was quite meaningful to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, oh, okay, it's meaningful. Like it means something like, it's not enough to be talking about it, but we're in a pandemic. It's hard to be on the ground in certain ways, but it, it gives me hope that there is meaning in moving that sort of discussion forward. And, you know, even if you just, even if we can only push, for, New York is a big enough lift. New York, there's millions of people here. If we can make things a little bit better in New York, that's millions of lives improved. Yeah. And that gives me hope. Like it's, it's different thinking about the whole country is overwhelming, but I can picture processes that would incrementally make New York better. It wouldn't, won't be enough, but like, and all the scrubby artists in New York are super on it. They're like putting water bottles together for protesters. They're, they're like, they're like outside of the immigration detention centers, like the scrubby punk rock kids. They, they know what they're doing. So they're, they're a good example here at least. Has your love for the city of New York gone better or worse because of this pandemic and this whole protest situation? It was, this, this isn't exactly true, but it was a good summer. <laughs> like the spring was so dark. Yeah. Every, every system was failing and people were dying and there were ambulance sirens all day and it felt utterly hopeless in a way that I wasn't even thinking about the city. It just felt like the world was in a very dark place. But this summer, people have been out. People have been like wearing masks indoors and people have been in the parks. And, you know, there's fear of a, you know, the Great Depression is going to hit. And a lot of the music venues are totally fucked. But, but July felt like it was alive, like the city was alive, like people were, were doing something, like you could see people. Um, and, and yeah, that, that was very heartwarming. And like going to the beach and seeing people cooking food at the beach and having their speakers up and like 10 different DJs at the beach blasting like someone blasting Dominican music, someone blasting Russian pop music, someone blasting like 70s rock and roll. You go like, okay, there's yeah. humans here. Like yeah. we're, we're, we're alive. You're here. I, I saw a DJ on the 4th of July who was, she was like, okay, everyone like spread out a bit, but you can dance. You're here, you're alive. You're here and you're alive. <laughs> you know, just like, okay, good. We're here, we're alive. There's a lot of shit going on, but we're here, we're alive. <laughs> while being, I suppose, addicted to traveling and being addictive to the idea of going out to clubs and theaters, um, how did you manage to stay alive? How did you manage to survive those months? It was, it, yeah, I mean, I have a two-year-old twins and an eight-year-old and my wife. And so really being with a two-year-old, like, 
from 7 a.m. through lunch, through dinner, through bedtime, through waking up at one in the morning. It's exhausting, but it's so deeply human and so beautiful. And you learn so much about a part of time that you don't remember. Like it's this time before your memories form and, but here you are experiencing it with this little kid. So that, that was not a negative to have to be so deeply engaged with the family and, and worried and gathered together. But yeah, having like a little unit to me felt meaningful. It was like, Oh, this, this is still meaningful. Like it, I didn't feel adrift. Okay. I didn't feel lost. I still felt, felt human. The album is called generations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have been looking into the archive of your own relatives of your ancestors. Mm -hmm. Was it because of the twins that you wanted to know more about your relatives yourself? No, it was more for, I mean, a little yes, because it turns your mind to where you're from. But I've, it's always been very present in our family. Like my, my dad's family lives in Maine and they live on the same island that they lived, that they lived for 300 years. <laughs> so we're, you know, we like, you pass by the farmhouse that your great grandmother was born in always. And, and on my mom's side, they're, it's a big Mormon family and they're very deep into family history and my mom was a musician, her parents were musicians, their parents were musicians. And like, I was very aware of that, but I hadn't, I had absorbed it, but I hadn't investigated it like with any critical eye. Yeah. And so there was just in that moment of like, how the fuck did we get here? Like, oh, how did I get here? Okay, I, I concrete, even just on the fact that I'm a musician and my great grandfather was a musician is not a coincidence. And so the events of the 19th century are extremely present in my daily life. Like I am who I am because of decisions that were made in the 1870s in Utah. Exactly. Um, and so that was, you know, that was one of the anchors for thinking about my life and about what I'm doing as an artist. It's like, where did I come from? And then it, that was just one of the anchors for it. Yeah. While being in New York and me being here nearby Amsterdam, how do you look from that mountain called New York towards the Netherlands or Amsterdam? How do you look at mm -hmm. us? How do you see us at this very moment? At this very moment, it's quite, this is just a bizarre, this is, I just happen to be re reading like historical fiction right now. <laughs> and it's all rooted in the creation of the modern world, which so much of, the modern world, particularly so much of the modern American world flows from the Netherlands, like fro flows from like the individual freedoms that, that y your country pioneered in many ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's also, there's deep problems rooted in that and there's deep beauty rooted in that. And yeah, and I've also, on a completely different tack, I've just been obsessively watching Anton Corbin videos this whole quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> being like what what is there to see what is there to you know there's his particular artistic vision has just been, i've just been like listening to joy division and watching his videos the whole time um and yeah there's I, we've always i've always passed through the netherlands on all my tours like that's where i would be three weeks from now i would i would be in amsterdam or rotterdam or you know i would be playing some festival either this fall or next summer or something you know it's, it's like one of the very few places where i would be guaranteed to be in the world yeah. <laughs> within within a record yeah. and so i I've, I've thought of it in that sense of like oh right i would be walking in this park in amsterdam with these friends that i know from the you know it, it that sense of of you know there's a very particular sadness and like oh i won't see those friends for another three years or what, you know, it would, there's, there's a little bit of loss from that. Yeah. Um, I sometimes tend to think that people who are in art have an open mind for any influence. And I always tend, I also tend to think that people who are in art are able to let their fascination and imagination go and find some sort of answer to difficult questions like, 
where are we at this fucking moment? <laughs> what is happening yeah. with this world? Um, do we have a new president coming? Yes or no? Because he is not just the president of the United States of America. He also will be yeah, president yeah. of the world a bit. Yeah. Because he's influential. You being an artist, are you looking for those answers? Yeah. I mean, I think to me, there's like this moment has inspired, like, what are our defenses? It's just like, as a human, you're like, how do we, what kind of levees do we build against the flood? Because it's already flooding, <laughs> but there's going to be another flood. Like, how do we, what do we do to, like, how do we make it so we don't get hurt, but also the people that are going to get extremely hurt, the people who are really vulnerable, how do we protect that? Like, how do you, my mind just immediately goes to defensive. You like go to a defensive crouch where people have just been like punching you in the face. So you're putting your hands up and you're trying to figure out what do we do to stop it? And which is, I mean, a lot of the protests in America are deeply rooted in that. Just like stop killing us, like stop hurting us, stop attacking us. And how do you defend, you know, there's this great, just this push for defense and like, how do we protect it? And then the other piece that I actually think music maybe is uniquely situated for is the comfort, it's like comfort exactly. and restoration. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's, it serves a similar purpose to food, <laughs> to like family cooking, where it's just, it, it restores your soul. Even the most aggressive music in the world will like give you some sort of balm. Um, yeah. And that's, that's been the gift of music to me, at least this last six months, where it's like, oh, actually there is something healing in that, which I, which has been, you know, it's always good to be reminded of that. Yeah. Were you able to create more or less songs over the past few weeks and months? I have been way less music oriented. The first three months were complete family time. Just like, how do we, both emotionally, just for every reason, like it was a hurricane happening in New York. It was so intense that it was just family time. Just like, how do we live and love each other? And only now, only in the last month have I started to emerge from that. And I'm like, okay, I can think of playing the piano in a creative way. I can think of, I can think of opening that side, but it's, it's, it, for me, it's been less musical. And for others, I know others who have been deeply creative in this time, but it, it hasn't been my experience. Yeah. I asked the question quite a lot of times over the past few months with the Dutch bands I'm actually working with. And it struck me that a lot of people tended to get more depressive about the whole situation. Yeah. And some musicians, some of your colleagues were getting really active, creating a yeah. lot of songs. Like I am always in some sort of lockdown being a musician. But most of the other answers were like, oh man, I feel so depressive because I cannot go out. Yeah. I cannot share happy, important moments, uh, binding, healing moments on stage anymore. And my body is, 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 is aching. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of it. Just no connection. Like I, the other night, my wife and I watched the movie Babette's Feast. Have you ever seen that? I just, you know, and uh, about a woman who, anyway, there's a great cooking scene in it, but it just, suddenly our hearts ached to like go to a restaurant and like sit with friends and like be eating something together and experiencing something together, which we've done, you know, we've had like three distant dinners with friends in backyards where you're across the yard from each other. Um, but yeah, just any sort of binding or connection has been so lost in the last six months. Yeah. All right. Well, my time is up. Thank you very much for your time here. Um, Thank you. I sincerely hope to meet you in Amsterdam or in New York someday. I'd love to invite you to come to my studio and do a recording because the album is great. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, Just, I would love to. Yeah. I'll be there 100% when, when, it's, when the borders are open. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Have a Stay good healthy. Bye, Will. You too. Bye. Bye, -bye.